Hello, my friends. Uh, Socrates said something about reading. He says, uh, reading is to the mind what exercise is to the body. Tai Sholani, a Nigerian educationist who passed on so many years ago, said, man is half man and perhaps less so if he doesn't read. All this thing shows the value or the importance of reading. I've always enjoyed reading, but to be perfectly honest, I didn't used to read as much as I should have. Besides, being a great uh, way to escape and unwind, reading increases your knowledge, focus, and world view as a business owner. It also gives you something interesting to talk about when you are networking. In short, reading is beneficial in both your personal and professional lives. But that's not the concern here. The biggest problem in actu is uh, actually uh, finding time to read more books. I was able to accomplish this by using this following 20 tricks. Good evening, my friends. I welcome you to Mentoring with Bola Adewara. And today we're going to look at how you can read books without stress. A lot of people always see reading as a kind of big thing, a kind of responsibility, a kind of uh, wahala, let me use that word, that ah, how can I read this book, stuff like that. But you can read. And today I want to show you some 20 tricks in such a way that at the end of the day you might even read 24 books in one year and you will not even know. You will read, but if you follow these tricks, you will read 24 books or let me say two, two books every month without stress. Let me start with the very first one, the very first trick. Don't make towering reading goals. Don't set too high goals when it comes to reading. Don't set goals you know you can't naturally achieve. If you know you don't like books and you are not a voracious reader, then don't commit yourself to reading more books than you can handle or else you will get frustrated. Set goals you know you can achieve ordinarily, like reading one book per month, a chapter a day, five pages a day, and so on and so forth. I would advise you to do it a chapter a day so that you can read comprehensively and understand where you are. If you are already doing a chapter a day so easily, then you can jump to, two to maybe two chapters a day. If you are doing five pages or more, you can move to ten pages per day. When you are not over committing, you'll find that uh, your reading experience is less stressful and more enjoyable. If your reading is not stressful, you will be able to concentrate and read really fast. Number two, stay out of trouble that will distract you. If you want to be a good reader, one of the challenges many people have with reading is that so many issues occupy their minds. They think of so many things that distract their attention and interest. Keep your mind at rest. Trust God. Plan properly and believe you will achieve your plans. If you are the prime type, if you are in the praying type, pray and believe it will be done. Stay out of trouble with your spouse so that you can have the peace of mind required at home. Do your duties on time. Stop procrastinating so that when it is time to read, you are not distracted by anything. You could, turn, you could also turn your phone off, you know, or put it on silence. Or maybe, uh, what do you call this thing, the, 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 air, the aeroplane mode for that time that you want to read. Number three, 
Create a reading time and let your family know this. Create a reading time and let your family know. If you are a starter in reading, in reading habits, it's good to create a time when you will read. Commit yourself to reading, like before going to bed, or early in the morning, or when you are traveling. You can set an alarm to remind you, and please be disciplined enough to respect your alarm. At home, let your friends and family know the time so that they can remind you, Daddy, Mommy, it's time to read or it's reading time. Daddy, have you read your book today? You know, when they know the time you have set aside for it, you can even proceed to create a reading time for the family so that everyone will be absorbed into the culture and no one is disturbing anyone. Just as the family know when it's time for lunch or supper, let there be time for reading. It's what you teach your children now that will grow with them. Get them the books they like to read, even also your wife too. Everybody loves something. Get them the books of their interests. I hope you are getting something. Number four, create a kind of library at home where you can see books all the time. The fact that you are seeing books uh, assimilates you into the culture of reading and it reminds you the need to read always when you see books all the time or at the time you set to read. I once visited a friend who has a stool on which he keeps a book, on which he keeps his books and some magazines. Ask me where? In the toilet, in the little room. The toilet, he keeps a book there. You know, create a kind of library, even a table in your sitting room where you can keep books. It's not the most that you have a very, you have rooms uh, as big as this where you have books all over the place. No, it could even be a table where you put all the books you want to read. The fact that you see these books all the time will remind you that I need to read this book. Create a conducive place to read, but certainly not on your bed or on the sofa. You will sleep. You will sleep off. Except maybe you have to sleep first before you start reading. You can sleep first before you start reading. Or else, if you pick a book at the time you are tired, I assure you, you will sleep off. Number five, read books you need to read. Don't read to impress anybody. Often, some of us find ourselves reading a book that do not really interest us. Maybe someone prescribed the book to you. And we thought it is a good read. Somewhere along the line, you start wondering, why am I reading this book? Quit early. The only thing you can do to sustain reading, or the only thing you have to sustain your reading, is your interest. Read books you want to read. When you read books you actually want to read, you'll find it difficult to put down. For me, the books that interest me are the biographies. If I pick any biography of any big person there, I wonder what will stop me from, from reading it. It doesn't mean a big person in life there. It could be that very person who has done something I appreciate so well. If you come to my library here, 60% of the book you find there, they are biographies. If you prescribe any other book for me, forget it. The mentality that winners don't quit does not really work when it comes to books. Don't read book to impress people. Read books to expand your knowledge and satisfy your earning. Number six, always have a book on hand. Opportunity to read, always, it always comes. When in public transport, maybe you are traveling to somewhere, when someone is driving you to somewhere, when waiting for someone, or you are waiting maybe some minutes, you are wasting some minutes away before a meeting starts, there is always opportunity to read. Read deliberately to ward off wrong thoughts, pains, unnecessary issues that could occupy your mind. An idle hand, they say, is the devil workshop. Don't allow your mind to be vacant always. It is a sad experience that in this part of the world, people will rather sleep than read when commuting in public transport. Now the phone has taken over. Facebook, WhatsApp. We are always on phone, but what are you reading on phone? Ask yourself, what are you reading on that phone? 
So anytime you are moving here and there, or maybe you are in the public transport, find time to read there. Rather than sleep or be looking, be watching things, pick something, pick that very thing, even your phone that you like to read. What memorable thing? Ask yourself there. This phone thing we're doing all the time, this is a Facebook, the WhatsApp there. What memorable thing have you gained from your 247 on social media? Try to break down your priorities and balance your reading. Find relevant ebook on phones and read. Thank God Google is there to direct you to so many ebooks. Number seven, borrow reading time from less important things. Let me explain this this way. Um, many of us know that we engage in irrelevant things sometimes. You are awake by 5 a.m. and you lay in bed till 6 before standing up. Borrow that time to read. Sit before You sit before the, the, the television and your children come immediately. Daddy, we want to watch uh, Nickelodeon, like my children will say. That very time that the children is sending you away from the television, you two move away from them really and pick a book to read. Even if it's 20 minutes, you will have read three pages. Your husband and his friends are watching football and you are not interested in it. Borrow that time to read. You understand me? Number eight, partake in reading challenges. In some part of the world, there is a game we call reading, there is a thing they call reading challenge. This is an excellent way to encourage you to read more books because it is fun and interactive. It gamifies your reading goal. When we were young, we read competitively. We all read to surpass each other. You know that those days of uh, Hadley Chase, uh, what do you call this, a uh, pace setter? All of us will gather ourselves in the library, in Kaduna Library, and it's like, have you read this, uh, The Mark of the Cobra? Have you read uh, Hopeful Lover? Have you read this? Have you read that? A kind of challenge among we youth that time. It doesn't happen this, that, this way. It's fun. It doesn't happen again like this. I mean, like, like, like it was in those days. Number nine, use technology to your advantage. We are in a world where things are dynamic. You don't have to read from the physical book again. There are e-books, audio books, which make reading simpler. So many people love physical books. It has a good feeling when you hold a book in your hand. And studies have shown that reading print materials lead to better comprehension and retention compared to computer screen. But sometimes, Carrying a book around isn't easy or convenient. Therefore, make use of your phone, iPads, Kindle, you know, so that uh, while traveling, you will not have problems of maybe carrying the book from one place to the other. Using technology gives you more opportunities to digest even more books through the air. Number 10, change your mindset. Stop thinking reading is a big assignment to accomplish. Tell yourself it's about helping yourself, enjoying yourself, like eating, like breathing, like making love, something you love doing always, a reflex action, a default. Stop seeing reading as something you are being forced or you are forcing yourself to do. Believe you are enjoying yourself. Reading is a thing to enjoy. It's not a duty the way we, we look at it here in this part of the world. Number 11 of uh, 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 how you can read without stress. You can skim. I will explain what I mean by skim. Go through something hastily. To read something hurriedly without being attached to details. This applies more to reading newspaper. You know, when you are reading newspaper or you are reading online, you just read it, you read it, read it, read it, and stuff like that. You can also do that in books, you know. But when it comes to reading for layer, you see, don't be afraid to skim books. It helps you get through the book faster so that you can move on to the next one. You can skim. Number 12, Read multiple books at a time. This is for mature readers anyway. So it might not apply to 
uh, everyone here. If you can, read multiple books at the same time. Keep them in different locations and perhaps on different formats, like your phone, like iPad, in your bedroom, in your car, you know, such so that anytime you are there, you will remember, oh, I was reading a book here. This is where I've got it to. I was reading, when you move to your bedroom, the book is there. You are reading. The snag is that it is not what you read that will help you, but what you remember. Therefore, it is necessary to have a place where you jot memorable things or highlighting them so that you can remember easily what you have read. I hope you are getting something, my friends. Number 13, keep your eyes open. I am always on the lookout for new books to read. I remember when uh, Adewale Ademoyega wrote this book why we struck around uh, late i think that was should be around late 1970s or early uh, 1980s that book opened the floodgate for more books on the nigerian civil war i was really interested in what caused the nigerian civil war how it was fought the heroic exploit of of nigerian soldiers how ironsi and fajui were killed in Ibadan, the pains of the biafran soldier the positions of uh, Colonel Odumegu, Ojuku, and many more things. I was very keen to know all these things. Till date, books are still being written on the Civil War. When you are passionate about an event, keep your eyes wide open and read, you know, be ready to buy books. Gradually, you are going to have your own library. Uh, what number are we in? Now? Number 14. Uh, on how you can read books without stress. Share what you read. Don't forget to share the books that you have read. It becomes a part of the entire reading process. If you discuss what you have read, it makes it more memorable to you. You don't forget it easily. Here, I find the social media very useful because you get contributions and new recommendations from people. Number 15, Read with a purpose. At the back of each reader, at the back of the mind of each reader, should be a purpose. What do you want to do with what you are reading? What do you stand to gain from what you are reading? For me, I read on purpose. I need information in each book which could influence in my style of writing or that I could convert into my own subsequently. I want to be an author. Every reader should be an author. It is not sufficient to read people's book and people are not reading you. Read, reading arms you with enough information to be a good writer. There is nothing like new book. Every new book on the shelf has been written somewhere. The author cleverly stole ideas from here, from there, added his experience to it and called himself an author. It will interest you to know that many of these philosophers got their inspirations from the Bible and went to expand it with their own experiences. Nothing new, my brother. Read with a purpose, but don't be caught plagiarizing. Number 16, uh, don't give gaps in reading. What do I mean by this? When you finish reading one book, don't think that, oh, I need to go on holiday from reading. No. Have your next book on standby. Don't entertain the feeling of being on holiday from reading. The way I do it, I have 18 books on standby every year. I have written the book I will read each month. In January, if you ask me what book would I be reading in August, I know it. What book would I be reading in June, I know it. What book would I be reading in September, I know it. I can tell you all this. I have read through the synopsis of each of these books and I can't wait to read, to read these books. So anytime you have finished one book, let another book be available, be ready, so that it is not as if you are, you are, you are, you are uh, uh, thinking, oh, what, 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 what should be the next book I want to read now? No. That should not be it. Let another book be available at every point in time. Number 17, join a book club. Joining a book club is another way to motivate you into reading more. You can register your children. A, a sister called me a little while ago that uh, 
His children don't like reading. And uh, I think uh, this is one of the areas that we can use this to encourage our children. Let your children have friends and exchange book. Among themselves, let them have what we call book club. That one will buy books that is, I mean, it's better to buy book for that one there, and this one too, and then they can exchange. In the vicinity where we live, they can have book club. You know, such clubs are made up of people who like reading and have their personal libraries. In a society where public libraries are a rarity, book club could augment. It could even be an online book club where e-books could be shared and exchanged. On WhatsApp, there are so many e-libraries and book clubs you can join. If you like, you can join my own book club. I have a book club I call Knowledge is Power Group. We call it Keep Grow. And uh, it's so wide now. We have almost about 19 different groups of it. 256, 256 people, 19 like that. Where we have shared over 500 e-books and people are encouraged to read. You can Google for book clubs around you. You know, there are digital book clubs, you know, like work pretty, that work pretty well. Check out uh, things like uh, Oprah Book Club 2.0. There is a Wired uh, Book Club. There is a, our Shared Shelf. There is a Andrew Locke uh, Book Club. There's the one I also I did. We call it Keep Grow. There's so many of them on WhatsApp. If you would like to join anyone, let me know. Contact me and I will direct you to some of them. Number 18, hijack your Facebook habit. The social media could be addictive. When some people wake up early in the morning, the first thing they do is to hit the social media. Sometimes it's a bad habit. But you see, bad habits are hard to break. But you can hijack your habits to turn, you know, those bad habits into good ones. Find a way to convert your social media habit into a very perfect reading habit. Remove notifications from your phone when you want to read. Place your phone on do not disturb. As I'm broadcasting now, all my phones are on do not disturb. The same thing when you want to read. Put your phones on do not disturb so that you can have perfect tranquility and good attention to read them. Number 19, practice speed reading. I don't know if you've heard what word speed reading. You see, um, speed reading... You know, here you force your eyes to move quickly by moving a pencil or a ruler along the, the, the lines of the, of the book you are reading. So that your eyes is moving as the pencil is moving. Or you can hold your breath and try to finish a paragraph in that time. Doing this suppresses the tendency to hear the words we read in our mind. Speed reading. You can Google it and it will be very good if you learn more about it. Number 20, like I said much earlier, is akin to what I've said earlier, join a reading challenge. It's like uh, you friends, you know, you read this and you ask your friend, have you read this book? Have you read this book? Oh, I have this book. I want you to see it there. You know, stuff like that is a kind of challenge. There are so many challenges you see on Facebook. There's a smile challenge. Uh, this challenge, that challenge. I have not seen reading challenge. Why don't we start it? I believe you have learned a lot from me today. And I thank you so much for listening. I think I've taken about 25 minutes of your time. I welcome you. I believe if you go ahead like this, things will change when we develop this reading habit. Uh, my next broadcast next week, we're going to look at how to prepare for old age. <laughs> Many of us don't know how to prepare for old age. We just wait. We just working until it happens. Until someone wakes up one morning and say good morning. You are 50 years today. Good morning. You are 60 years today. But we need to prepare for old age so that we don't become a kind of liability on ourselves. Next week, Wednesday, God be with you. Thank you. Good evening.